Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. This is going to be another benchmarking video, and this time we're going to be focusing specifically on Arch and Arch-based Linux distributions. And this was actually a request by one of you guys, and I thought it was a good idea because I did a video uh, about a week ago on Garuda Linux, and a lot of people had a lot to say about it. Primarily that it is bloat and it is slow. So that is going to be one of the distributions that we are going to look at, including Vanilla Arch. And the Arch that we're going to take a look at is running the 5.11 kernel, and the package count is at 755. Now I will note I took these screenshots after I installed GIMP and Kden Live, as well as their dependencies. So on all of these, the initial package count was actually a little bit lower. Next up on the list is going to be Manjaro Linux. Now this is running the 5.10 kernel. It has 1,144 packages. And I do believe this is Manjaro 21, but I'll have a link in the description with all the info, all the results, everything you guys need to know. Next up, we have Garuda Linux. Now this is running the 5.10 kernel. This one has 1,246 packages. And one thing you're gonna notice is all of these distributions will have the same desktop environment. They're running XFCE 4.16. Lastly, we have Endeavor OS. And again, this is running the 5.10 kernel and it is shipping with 840 packages out of everything we're gonna be looking at. This one technically is the one that is closest to Vanilla Arch. And I will note for this, I just went ahead and used the kernel version that these distributions shipped with. But later on, I will do an upgrade of one of the kernels on a distribution just to see if there's any significant uh, performance differences. So now that we got all that out of the way, we're actually gonna do some side-by-side -side speed test comparisons. But before I do that, I just want to say this video is sponsored by you guys. This is technically my announcement video for YouTube memberships. So if you're already subscribed, you'll see a little join button on the bottom. You go ahead and do that if you want to. There's some perks that will come with it, such as member only posts. Eventually I'm gonna be adding custom emojis, things like that. And if you're not interested in giving Google money, there's also a Patreon. So you can go ahead and support my content there as well. So now with all that said, we're actually gonna be getting to the first test and that is the hard boot. The computer is completely shut down, no power in the system and I started the timer on when the button was clicked. And plain old Vanilla Arch came in first place at just above 25 seconds, followed closely by Manjaro at 26 seconds. Next up was Endeavor OS at 31 seconds, followed up just by under five seconds, Garuda Linux came in last place at 36 seconds. Now the boot speed from a completely dead machine is cool and all, but something even more important to me is the reboot speed. So what I did was I opened up the terminal, typed reboot, and started the timer as soon as I hit enter. And in running this test, Vanilla Arch and Manjaro were pretty close, Manjaro was slightly ahead, but they both came in at 27 seconds. This was followed up by Endeavor OS at 34 seconds and Garuda Linux at 38 seconds. So now that we are completely rebooted into the systems, I went ahead, opened up the terminal again, ran HTOP so we could compare some of the background processes and the base system RAM usage. And first up, we have Arch Linux. Arch was running at 497 megabytes of RAM, with 54 tasks running in the background. And then we had Manjaro Linux running at 723 megabytes of RAM with 72 tasks running in the background. Now Garuda Linux was definitely the most hungry when it comes to RAM usage at 1.25 gigabytes of RAM with 86 tasks running in the background. And then finally we have Endeavor OS. This was only about 100 megabytes above Vanilla Arch at 598 megabytes. It also had 61 tasks running. So the next test I ran was a simple application launch. For this, we used GIMP. Now with everything that was just said, I was surprised because Garuda Linux actually opened up GIMP the quickest followed closely behind by all the others. From there, I made a 3000 by 3000 canvas and rendered out the lava texture. It's one of the more strenuous processes that's good for benchmarking. And in this case, we actually had the same results as the application launch with Garuda Linux coming in first place, tailed closely behind by all the other distributions. So now for the tests we're gonna run, I needed to move over some files. I had 1.1 gigabytes in benchmarking and video files, so I figured I would time it. This was done on a standard USB 2.0, so if you're using a USB 3.0 or better hardware, these results will probably be much tighter. Doing this actual file transfer, we had Vanilla Arch coming in the lead at 48 seconds, followed up closely by Manjaro Linux at 49 seconds, 
Garuda Linux was a little behind at 53 seconds. And one thing that was surprising to me, at least in this case, Endeavor OS came in at 1 minute and 11 seconds. Now from there I opened up Caden Live and probably did the test that was most important to me. I went ahead and dragged over my video file, it's about a 3 minute video. I layered them over so two different videos on top of each other. The top one I lowered to 50% size and put an alpha shape circle effect over it. This is an effect you commonly see in my videos, it's how I do the little webcam circle thing up in the top, and it's actually a fairly strenuous process to render this out. So with all that set up, I rendered this out as an MP4 at full quality, and at least in this case, Garuda Linux actually came in the lead at 4 minutes and 19 seconds, followed up closely by Vanilla Arch at 4 minutes and 22 seconds. And then we had a fairly decent gap because Manjaro rendered this out in 5 minutes, followed up by Endeavor OS at 5 minutes and 9 seconds. Meaning in my tests, there's actually a whole 50 second difference rendering out this project. And now this is actually a pretty good time to transition into some of the synthetic benchmarks that I ran, and the first one is a video render test. This is the X264 render benchmark, and it actually measures in frames per second. Now one thing about these synthetic benchmarks, you're going to notice a lot of the results are going to be much tighter, and it was true in this case as Arch came in at 94 frames, Manjaro at 92, Garuda Linux at 95, and Endeavor OS at 96. From here we're going to move to straight CPU benchmarks, and in this case I ran the build Linux kernel, the CUA render, and the compress gzip benchmarks. You can see on this graph everything is very tight, compress gzip across the board was basically a tie, the C render was basically a tie across the board, and the Linux kernel compile did have slightly wider margins but it was still incredibly close. This is measured in seconds, so the lower the score the better, and in this case Manjaro was actually the slowest at 98 seconds, and Vanilla Arch was able to compile the Linux kernel a little bit quicker at 95 seconds. From there I opened up the Blender Render BMW 27 test, and we basically have the same thing going on when everything is incredibly close. Again, this is measured in seconds, lower the better. We did have Manjaro and Endeavor about a second quicker than Arch and Garuda Linux, but it's essentially a tie. And then looking over at the GPU results for this test, it's kind of the same situation, but in this case we did have Endeavor OS in the lead, followed up closely by Arch Linux at 286 seconds, and then Manjaro and Garuda Linux were basically a tie. Now from here we're going to go over to Geekbench scores. Now Geekbench does a lot of different tests to kind of give you an overall score for your system in both single and multi-core performance. Now unlike the other tests on this, it's based on points, so the higher the score, the better. And looking at this chart, we do see some widening margins, but not anything too significant. Uh, Garuda Linux did come pretty low on both of the tests compared to the other ones. For Arch Manjaro and Endeavor OS, it was basically a tie at 1350, but Vanilla Arch did squeeze in a slight 4 point advantage. Looking over at the multi-core scores, Vanilla Arch was in the lead over Endeavor OS ever so slightly, followed up ever so close by Manjaro, and Garuda Linux was actually a Good number behind at 7182. Now the next benchmark we ran was RAM speed test, and in this case it was measured in megabytes per second, so the higher the score the better. And in this case it did range between 20,200 and 20,400, so it was fairly close, basically within a margin of error. But if we do want to pick a winner, Manjaro was actually the fastest, while Garuda Linux showed the lowest RAM speeds. Now to measure gaming performance, what I did was open up the U-Engine Valley benchmark. This will just run through a couple different graphically intensive scenes, and I went ahead and ran this test at 1080p high quality. And this was a case of Garuda Linux actually coming out in the lead at 4594, followed up closely by Endeavor OS at 4590, and then in this case Vanilla Arch Linux actually scored the lowest, just two points behind Manjaro. So originally I was going to run all the benchmarks like I just did, and then go ahead and upgrade the three other distributions to 5.11, but that proved to be very time consuming and I immediately ran into problems, especially in Garuda Linux, trying to use their kernel upgrade tool. So I ended up not doing this in every single one. Doing this in Manjaro was actually worked pretty well, so I went ahead and re-ran all these benchmarks using Manjaro with the 5.11 kernel. And I'll just go ahead and put up a table here with all the results we ended up getting. And across the board you cannot see that there was significant improvement. As a matter of fact, in some instances there was actually a decline in performance. 
but for the Linux kernel compile, the 5.11 kernel was about a half a second quicker. C-Ray was basically a tie. We did get a improvement of three frames per second in our X264 test. RAM speed was basically a tie. Compressed gzip was basically a tie. In the Valley benchmark, there was a slight performance increase. And then as far as the Geekbench scores, there's actually an improvement of six points for single core and an improvement of about 100 points for multi-core performance. So overall, this does show that there is a slight improvement when it comes to upgrading the kernel, but it really doesn't matter unless if you have specific hardware that was actually addressed in the kernel update. Generally, all the numbers we just saw are either within a margin of error or don't really make too much of a difference in actual real world performance other than the Geekbench score did see a good bump. So that about wraps up these benchmarks. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it and I do hope you learned something. Ultimately, when it comes to system performance, you saw some interesting results such as uh, Garuda Linux uh, scoring pretty rough when it comes to the Geekbench scores against the other distributions, but at the same time actually having better real world performance with some of our initial side by side testing. As far as like base system utilization or bloat, it really doesn't matter unless if you have like 4 gigs of RAM or less. So unless you absolutely need something lightweight or you just want to build an Arch distro because that's what you're used to doing, Vanilla Arch is a really good move. It did very well in all of these tests. But for those of you who talk smack or don't like Manjaro, Garuda Linux or anything like that, when it comes to base performance, there's just really not that much of a difference. And in some cases, because of the optimization that some of the teams put in with building these distributions, it might actually perform a little bit better at least compared to my personal base Arch install, which generally was fairly minimal. So with that said, again, I did launch YouTube membership, so next to the subscribe button down below, if you join that, that would be absolutely awesome. Additionally, I do have a Patreon that you can go ahead and check out, but if you're not interested in that, simply liking this video, leaving a comment down below, and subscribing so you do not miss future uploads will be more than enough. I do hope all of you have a beautiful day. If you're interested in checking out more benchmarking videos like this, including Windows, I go over different ones with like all KDE, Plasma desktop running, I have a, quite a few of them. So if you're interested in more benchmarking videos like this, I will link to a playlist down below. With that said, have a beautiful day and goodbye.